The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. LaRouchePack.com is their main website. They've also got LaRouchePub.com. And again, regardless of what you think of Lyndon LaRouche, I mean, the guy has been on the political scene since the 50s. He's, he's, the, the mainstream media can't even find a proper label for him. And so much of what he says I know is accurate because I do deep research. I mean, here's the deal. I've got the last name Jones. I'm more English in my uh, pedigree than anybody else. I love English culture, the UK, the whole nine yards. Because uh, I'm Scottish, Irish, the whole, you know, all of it. I'm German, Alsatian, French. Uh, I'm a Heinz 57 here. And, and, but but the, 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 the system of the Norman and William the Conqueror and that system that became the modern empire and the imperium and puppet governments and councils on foreign relations and Royal Institute of International Affairs, these, these corporate governances that control government that the British Empire created, definitely the ghost of the British Empire possesses and runs the Anglo-American North Atlantic Treaty conglomerate that ties into the EU. That is the dominant force in the world. And then you've got the Chinese that are somewhat double dealing with it. The Russians are isolated, being attacked. you got to root for the underdog because they're not doing anything to anybody. 
and I'm not romanticizing it either. It's just they're not doing anything to us. Criminal elements that are trying to impoverish us as political control under eugenics-based systems, Agenda 21, what I call neo-feudalistic serfdom, are trying to do the same thing to us they've done to the Russians before. And so I'm for team humanity and really building a future, a renaissance. And I know Lyndon LaRouche is for that as well. That's why he's been so roundly demonized for decades. And what I want you to give us here is solutions. But first, I want to bring this up because this is a clip from six, seven years ago on C-SPAN. I happen to be watching C-SPAN in the coffee room back there and caught this on tape. Uh, and it's coming up in the upcoming Obama film. We're actually getting to this British issue because... Most of our leadership, Democrat and Republican, become knighted later and even get properties and, and money and all these other things. And it's a big deal. And this is what elites relish more than anything, is not just becoming a knight, but a knight commander of the Order of Bath, which is a, you know, he can walk right into MI6 and give orders if he wants to. They act like the queen doesn't run anything, folks. She runs that whole country. She tells the prime minister what to do. She shuts down roads in England every day randomly to exercise her power. They're above the law when they're not hanging around with Jimmy Savelle. So I want to play this clip and get him to encapsulate what the British monarchy is, because it's bigger than the monarchy. Because then they double back, there's this war against sovereignty. People go, well, I'm for the monarchy, and then it gives us sovereignty. Now, that's British. Well, they're not even British. But I want to play this clip and get Lyndon LaRouge's take on it. Uh, here is Colin Powell walking into a reception uh, to go into a dinner. Uh, with the Queen of England in D.C. Here it is. Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. Pardon me? Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. Very honored. Her Majesty gave it to uh, Alman to me about 12 years ago. Knight Commander. Knight Commander. Okay. Listen carefully. Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. There was only one thing uh, bigger than Hollywood in the 20s and 30s, and that was the British Hollywood. And if you watch all those old movies, it's all British propaganda. Uh, and we were taught to hate the French, love the British. I mean, so you can see the programming. Pratt Street, Council on Foreign Relations, 1922, set up to take over our government, British intelligence. This is a fact. Now, I don't see what's left of the British, the British people. We're not talking about them. That's been sucked dry by this. We're talking about... The, 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 the Norman class, if you want to go back to where this came from, still ruling much of the world today, tied into the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, and others. Is that an improper analysis from you, the grand expert on this, Lennon LaRouche? It's actually older. It goes back to Venetian the history of Zeus and Prometheus, which was famous in the Greek history. And it actually is the model in terms of everything in transatlantic culture, for example, in terms of history. Break it down for us, please. What? Yeah. So th this, uh, I mean, we're, what we're involved in is we're involved with two systems. One system is against the Roman Empire in particular, and the British Empire, which is formed about the same time that the British declared war on their former colonies, are the same thing. This is this is, is an old standing thing. This is what is called an imperial empire. It's not a national thing. Their nation, national uh, uh, interests and so forth are part of the game, that play, play the whole game. But the issue is, it's the same thing is what Columbus affected through the influence of Nicholas of Cusa on him, that, in, that we sent people across the oceans to colonize in, in the area across the Atlantic Ocean. In the hope, because Nicholas of Cusa, who was this great priest, who gave this, created this policy, to cross the oceans because Europe was a mess. And what happened is, the, this, this happened, Columbus's discovery was part of this process. And what became the United States was an expression of recognizing the terrible conditions of Europe. Now, for a great period of time, we find that since the United States was established and was being established, we had much support for the United States and its cause from Europe. But what has happened is the Roman Empire, now, which is now brought up as the British Empire, because that, that occurred at the same time that we got into our war with, with uh, what became the United States. Because the British Empire had taken over and was determined to become a world empire. So other nations supported us in our revolution to create our United States on that basis. 
But since that time, the British Empire has again and again tried to control us. They've controlled us from inside, the, for example, New York City is a center of this pollution of the British taking over Manhattan through the international British-controlled banking. Wall Street is a product of that. Wall Street is actually a British agency. It is not an American agency. And my determination is to get back to a Glass-Steagall system and bankrupt these characters, and we could do it if the will were there. We are now going bankrupt. We have the state of Texas is dying. The state of California is dying. It will go on for years to come unless we do something about it. And I say we have to do something about it. And the question is, can we in the United States, by getting Obama thrown out of power, and he is 70% of the American people want Obama eliminated from power. I'm one of the first. Get this guy out of there. If we do that, we can take measures to save our country. And if, we, if the United States is not included, does not choose to put it, itself involved in a war with, with the British interests against the uh, Eurasian interests, if we, don't, this, if we don't go into such a war, there will be no such war. And what I'm concerned about, pull Obama out of office right now. You've got about probably 70% of the voters want him out of there. Let's get him out of there. Sure, sure. Quantify uh, why it's important to get him out, what signal it sends, how you believe it will derail this whole out-of-control downhill avalanche that's happening. Exactly. We can do it. And that's what I'm working on. And I find that there are an increasing number of people who have been know me for a long period of time. And, you know, they used to duck me because they say, you're right, but don't tell anybody I told you so. And, I, and these are from leading people circles. And I do work with leading circles internationally and in, in the United States. I do that. And I have a special role to play because of my forecasting capability. And by the way, I'm not getting you to talk about yourself, but, it, but it's really unknown out there other than a few Washington Post, Washington Time articles, and things from the 80s when Ronald Reagan was reading your stuff and when uh, you were visiting the CIA every week, landing in, in your own helicopter. Everybody was real jealous, the Washington Post said. And, and then, of course, your, it said your connections back to the OSS when you did World War II. That's all shadowy. Talk about yourself a little bit because you are a very interesting person, Lennon. Tell us how you got into these international circles and why multiple CIA directors, we can pull them up if folks want to, I forget the main one, said you, quote, had the best private intelligence network in the world. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And, and then meanwhile, most people just hear, Lennon LaRouge, I heard he's crazy because CNBC said so or MSNBC said so. <laughs> I wouldn't pay any attention to foolish people. Like no, that. no, no, I know. But I mean, I know you don't like to talk about yourself, but you know, you're 90 <laughs> years old now. You've had this great life. I mean, tell us, how did you get into these power circles? And, and I mean, really, who are you? No, I just happened to be, I didn't like the education system I was exposed to in schools. So I thought it was stupid and I was right. And therefore, I became successful and unpopular at the same time, <laughs> because I, you know, I never, I would never submit. I don't believe that we have teachers who are supposed to tell us what to think. We're supposed to have teachers to guide us into making discoveries of our own and testing those discoveries and that sort of process. So, I mean, for, for a long time, I, you know, I hated Euclidean geometry. I despised it. I was right, absolutely correct. It's stupid. You still have people who believe in that nonsense. But so, therefore, I had developed these scientific capabilities, and I became a consultant in the 1950s. I was a, a very important consultant at one point. And then I got in a fight with the, F, the FBI, and the FBI was not pleased that I would not obey them. And so I had some periods of troubles then, but I was still doing what I was doing. And then I had a forecast in 1958 that I made and said, that, you know, or 58, 68 rather. And I said, well, even through about two or three years, this whole thing is blowing up. Your whole Wall Street system is going to blow up. And uh, came along the 70, you know, 1971 and the summer of 71 and blew, the whole thing blew up. So there was a big discussion then about that, and I was invited to debate all these characters from Wall Street and in their offices in a meeting we had at this, this, you know, December 2nd of that year. And I was right, and I've always been right on this. And what's happened is I've always really believed it against the British and Wall Street crowd. 
Their conception of economy has destroyed the United States. And I've been against